Hey guys, it's Mrs. Conway. I'm going to go over the solutions for tasks one and two from unit three. So this first task is uh, talking about some YouTube videos. And, and the first YouTube video um, is the true science of parallel universes. You can look it up and watch it if you want. It has approximately five dislikes for every 300 likes. The like to dislike ratio for the Vsauce video, did the past really happen, is about 400 to seven. So what you're supposed to decide is which video is liked better, um, and then justify mathematically. Um, so there's a couple different ways you could do this. Um, if you did the delta math first, your incl first inclination might actually be to make one of those double number lines. Um, so you would you would probably make a double number. You'd have to make a double number line for each one and then scale down to zero or sorry, one. So you might um, look at video one, the true science of parallel universes. And so you're going to have likes and you're going to have dislikes. And um, so you'll have your double number line, which is oof, not going well for me right now. Anyway, it starts at um, 300 likes and um, five dislikes. You wanted to scale that down so you're comparing one dislike to likes, then you would have to, um, you're going to go from five to one, you're dividing by one, so we'd have to do 300 divided by five is going to be 60, so that would give us 60 likes for one dislike. If we're looking at, did the past really happen? Did the past really happen? You're going to have um, 400 likes for every seven dislikes. Okay, if we bring that down so that we're comparing to one um, dislike, we're going to have to divide 400 by seven, which is probably not going to come out to a clear the whole number. 57 and 1 7 but you can clearly see that if you're comparing 60 likes for one dislike to 57 and a seventh likes to dislikes that um the first video the true true science of parallel universes should come should have it's better liked right it, it has more likes for every dislike um so this is 60 like per dis like this is 57 and 1 7 likes per dislike and you might have gotten um uh divided by seven 57.142857 so i've got 57.14 that's basically the same number um so another way that you might compare these um would be to do it the other way. Some people might actually be inclined to, to dis do dislikes divided by likes, but then you just have to remember that the bigger number is more disliked and therefore better liked. Um, and you might not go straight for the number line. Maybe you just, maybe you just start it by dividing. Just find that rate. Do 300 divided by five and 400 divided by seven. Either way, you're going to end up with these same numbers. So the true science of parallel universes appears to be liked more. All right. So our next um, question is, okay, so the next question literally says to test our thinking by using another method. So my other method would be, um, oh, because the other method we would maybe have you know, we could compare 300 to 5 and 400 to 7. Maybe we try to find a common denominator um, so that we're comparing them to the same thing. So then um, we would multiply this by 7 over 7 and this by 5 over 5. So we could see what they look like with the same denominator. So that gives us... I don't know why I'm using a calculator. These are easy numbers. That's 2100 over 35 versus 
um, 2000 over 35. So, um, and this is the first one, which was, and this is, um, and again, you gotta just pay attention. So we did likes on top and dislikes on the bottom. So this is showing that, you know, if, if, if we have 35 dislikes, um, they both have 35. So the, the parallel universes one has 2,100 likes for 35 dislikes, and this has 2,000. So again, it should be pretty clear to see that we have more, more likes on the, um, parallel universes video because 2100 is bigger than 2000 and our denominator is the same. So totally different numbers, see, that you end up with, but it's still a way to compare it. The important part is that we have a, co a common denominator. Here we were getting down to one in our denominator and finding our unit rate. Here we're making the denominator the same, but not one. But this way we can have whole numbers to compare. It's not that much more liked, but it is more liked. All right, ants and sloths. Um, this one's going to get messy fast, um, but we're, we're comparing a, so we've got a black worker ant can move about three inches per second and typically lives three to five months. A sloth lives 20 to 30 years, but goes about 125 feet in a day. So there's a couple of different things going on here. For one thing, they're giving us an age range and for another, um, they gave us totally different units on both things. So we're obviously going to have to practice our unit conversions. And we're going to have to pick, do we compare lower bound or upper bound, or do we compare lower bound to upper bound? Like for instance, we could compare um, the ants to the three months and the sloth to 30 years and see if it still works out. But let's start by getting ourselves worked up to maybe how much an ant moves in a day. Um, so, or maybe let's find ant for the minimum period. Okay. So first of all, we need to get up to months here. We've got inches per second and we need to make sure we're comparing like things. So hopefully once the ant gets big enough, we can convert that to, to feet. So three inches per second. So we're going to start with the ant. Um, three inches in a second. We need to convert that to, we need to figure out how um, much it moves in like say a day so that we can work our way up to months. Um, so if it moves three inches in one second and there are 60 seconds in a minute, that means that it'll move three times 60, which is 180 inches, one minute. And then we need to convert that to probably hours. So let's multiply. So now to hours, we would do 180 inches per one minute times 60 minutes per one hour, minutes cancel. So we get a uh, calculator out, 60 is, okay. So our numbers are getting kind of big here. That's um, inches in one hour. Maybe now would be a good time <laughs> to convert that number to feet to make it less frustrating to work with. So if I have 1,800 inches in an hour, I need to make it smaller to get to feet, right? So I'm going to multiply that by one foot for every 12 inches. So I'm basically dividing by 12 here. So that's going to give me 10,800 divided by 12 is 900 feet per hour. Okay. So now we still need to work our way up to months. So let's uh, multiply this by 24 hours in a day, hours in a day. So that gives us 21,600 feet 
in one day. Wow, that's that's a lot of movement. Um, all right. Now, of course, this is can moves. We're assuming maximum movement here. You might say, ah, I'm thinking that ant might sleep a little bit, so you multiply it by 12 hours per day. Um, but now we would multiply that number by... Okay, so sorry if I'm in a weird spot because I ran out of space on my hard drive and um, my video stopped and I don't know where it stopped. So <laughs> where I'm at is that I've got the ant moves 21,600 feet in a day. So now I'm trying to figure out how far it would move in a month, which is 30 days. So I have to multiply that number by 30 days. So times 30 days in a month. So 648,000 feet in one month. Okay, and then I'm gonna just kind of leave it right there because that number is easy enough to multiply. Actually, actually I won't. We'll, 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 we'll just do both. We'll do our minimum and our maximum. So it's a minimum of three months and a maximum of four months. So, so three months, three months would be 60, 648,000 times three is 194, no, 1,944,000. So in, uh, wait, no, that's feet, three months. Okay. And then for five months, three million. Okay. So now let's look at the sloth, which is going to run me right off the edge of my paper. Um, the sloth moves 125 feet in a day and it lives 20 to 30 years. So I need to take my 125 feet in one day and multiply it. We need to get two years. So I need to start by multiplying one day times 30 days in a month, which is 3,750 feet in a month. Then I need to figure out um, how much he moves in a year. So month, and there are 12 months in a year because I'm not a crazy person. You guys didn't see because I'm going to delete that, <laughs> but I definitely did this where I put 52 months in a year because, because it's nine o'clock at night. So I got 45,000 feet in a year. So we're going to do that times 20 years and times 30 years to get my minimum and maximum movement for a sloth. So I get 900,000 for the minimum and I get 1,350,000 for the maximum. Um, and this is feet, okay? So, you know, when you first look at it, you might say, well, obviously the ant wins. And, and there's a lot of argument to say that the ant would win because the ant, at minimum, it has 1.9 million feet and at maximum has 3.2, whereas the sloth has 900,000 up to 1.3 million. But one thing we're not really accounting for here, if we go up and read the directions again, worker ant can move around three inches per second, can move three inches per second. Sloths live between 20 and 30 years and trek no more than 125 feet in a day. So we're taking the sloth's movement over a 24 hour period. It's more of an average, whereas the ant we're talking about its actual speed. So for an ant, I can't imagine that ants are active all day, every day. So you might as much as want to divide these numbers in half to get an accurate feel for how much an ant moves because they might not move 24 hours a day. Now, if we were to divide these two numbers in half, 1.9 million divided by two would be over 900, well, because 8, 1.8 million would be like 18 divided by two, so that'd be 900,000. So this would still be just a little over, I think. I think you could still 
who you would still say that, but if you were saying an ant work moves less than half a day, you could maybe make the argument that the ant moves more. So I would say that it's not 100% conclusive, but the ant appears to move more. But you still need to come up with some sort of defense. You could definitely defend that the sloth moves more. All right, so um, if you had made some arithmetic errors or you need to review this unit rate change here, um, go back and fix that on yours. Otherwise, um, go ahead and get that turned in.